Hey everybody, Lonnie here, working uh, through this backyard to browser Atmo weather application that is taking uh, OSIsoft Cloud Services, also known as OCS, as a data source, and we're storing weather information, we're pulling that information out, and we're displaying this in an Angular end user application. So we're working on this, uh, we're just gonna get started on this application now. This is gonna set up the base skeleton for, uh, for a few more parts that should go relatively quickly and you'll see that all that hard work that we've been doing setting up the API to give us the data just the way that we're going to want to have it and all that information that's stored in OCS this is all going to pay off now so hopefully you've been sticking with me through this and uh, yeah this is going to be a lot of fun so let's go ahead and look at the architecture just to review where we are uh, so the top part completely completed uh, those collectors are now running up in, as Azure functions and sending data uh, into OCS um, we're pulling the data out of OCS and we have our uh, Atmo API also deployed as an Azure function that is there ready to provide data once we start writing our Atmo app here, which is going to be uh, in Angular, the latest version of Angular, which is eight at the time of this recording. And once we're all done with that, we'll deploy it to Firebase. So this will be a complete, completely serverless uh, architecture. So we're not gonna have uh, servers that we didn't stand up any servers to create this application and uh, it'll uh, run in the cloud as long as we have it up there and we don't have to do any kind of maintenance as far as patches or anything like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, get out of our uh, PowerPoint here and we'll come over to our command line. The command line, I'm gonna use Angular CLI and just go back to my browser here. Here's Angular CLI, you can go to the website. Uh, super simple to use, but this will do all the scaffolding to get our Angular um, application set up I'm not gonna dive into a lot of details around Angular and the CLI. There's tons of information out there um, to get up to speed on that technology if you're not familiar with it. This is a super simple example though, very basic. Hopefully you'll be able to still follow along even if you're not totally getting all the Angular stuff. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do an ng new. ng just does the CLI command. Uh, and we'll create a new um, application. We'll call this atmo.ui. Uh, or dash UI. And this is going to ask us a couple of questions. Do we want routing? No, this is a super simple example. So we just say no. We're gonna use CSS, just plain old CSS in this. We don't need uh, to go up to SAS. Uh, we're not gonna be dealing with any of the features that SAS would uh, give us. Um, and then I just hit enter and we're gonna go ahead and load up all the uh, NPM libraries in the module folder. This will take uh, you know, 30 seconds or so on my computer, depends on your internet speed. So we'll just uh, come back when this is completed. Okay, everything's done. I'm going to change my directory to Atmo, uh, change it to my UI directory. And then I'm gonna start up Visual Studio Code as my IDE uh, from the command line. Came over on my other monitor, so I'll bring that over and we'll take a look at. So VS Code is a great IDE. If you haven't used it, I absolutely love it. I've been using it for, um, couple of years now and it's just just fantastic uh, so here's our source file uh, here's our main uh, our main uh, index HTML coming in and then we have uh, asset folder and we have our uh, application component uh, let's come back to our window here I want to um, and I'm gonna go ahead and do a control back tick here. Don't put up my terminal down here and I'll do an ng serve. And this will compile the initial application. We just make sure everything's working. It's gonna be running on localhost uh, 42. So I can go ahead and uh, do a control click down here and we can see the application is running. It's perfect. Uh, clear out all this code that we don't want. This is all the uh, HTML that's in the, um, uh, that we see here. I'll hit control S and you can see. So let's come back, let's go to our uh, CSS here. This is where, this is our main CSS. So this is all the global stuff. So I'm, first thing I wanna do is bring in um, the proper font. Okay, I'm gonna come over to Google Fonts and I'm gonna look for Roboto. And here's Roboto, so. This one, I'm gonna select this font, come down here and uh, we'll customize it. I'm gonna bring in a 300 and a 400, um, maybe a 500, uh, do 700, we're gonna do bold. Uh, 
go ahead and look at the embedded code here for an import statement. This is what's uh, CSS version. So we can just copy that, bring that in, and we're good to go. And then I uh, want to do a, uh, a few uh, resets here. So CSS resets is just kind of getting everything set up so that um, we're not going to have any problems when we're dealing with border uh, margins and, and getting everything centered and all that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll do a body and we'll do our div. Um, and I want to set our margins to zero. I'm going to set our padding to zero. Uh, I want to set the font size to 100%. Um, and I want to have a font uh, inherit. And our font family, we'll make that to our um, Bodo, Bodo, and uh, zero. And then finally, I want to change the color of the font to uh, to um, 202020 to make it a little bit gray, a little lighter, lighter gray. Uh, and let's go ahead and put in our. Um, I'm gonna put in our uh, app title. I'm gonna have a uh, app title here, and we can set that up in our uh, TypeScript file here. App title. This will just be atmo, and um, and then I also let's go in the main HTML here, index.html. Let's change this title just to say Atmo. That'll um, that's this is what shows up on the tab within the browser. Okay, so let's come back to our uh, application. Let's save everything. Um, okay, and uh, move over that so we're not. So we have our so we do have the um, proper font and font color and uh, everything looks good no margins or anything like that that's perfect okay we want to go ahead and get uh, the background set up at this point so let's come back to our um, style css and i want to load in um, an image on the on the background of something that's weather related so i'm going to do a um, kind of like a cloud a cloudy sky so let's bring in some images here that we can use. I have those already ready to go. Um, I'll drop those in asset. So under body, I'm going to put this on the background. So let's go ahead and set up our background image, and it's going to be URL. And we'll go ahead and we'll um, do our assets. And we'll do our 800. Um, and we have, I have three images here. These are different sizes for different screen sizes. And we're putting in some media queries. And I'll show you how that works. Uh, if I just save that, just to make sure that we have our uh, image here. Oops, let's get rid of this backslash. Um, and then we can see there's there's our image, but it's all you know messed up as far as how it's getting formatted and everything. So let's fix fix that stuff. So let's go ahead and set up our position, and I want to center center top and bottom and left and right. And we want to go ahead. Um, I want to set up the repeat. I don't want it to repeat, and so we'll just say no repeat. And and we're going to go ahead and uh, set the attachment property, which I'm going to make that fixed. And I want to, um, the size, I want it to be a cover, so it's going to be the entire screen. Um, and then I want to set up a background color. And we'll make this uh, RGB um, 20. One three three two two four. That'd be like a light blue color. So as um, the background uh, image, if it's if it's coming over from uh, from the server, 
we'll, we'll have a light black background color, light blue, so it won't look weird. Now let's go ahead and save that and see how that looks. Okay, that looks a lot better. Um, let's set up our media queries now. And so the media query, we're gonna, we're gonna be looking at our screen size and we wanna say if there's a minimum width of, uh, first breakpoint, I'm gonna set at 700 pixels. You can set these breakpoints wherever you want. This is just what I chose uh, based on playing around with this. And I use my next uh, larger image, which would be 1200 here. And, um, and then we'll set up uh, one more media query here and we'll set this breakpoint at 2000 pixels. And this one's gonna be uh, our largest image. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. Now, if I, um, if I work on this, if we look at the, um, if we look at how this works, press F12 to get into the debugger tools. But we can see our network up here. I have this set to pixel, uh, pixel two XL, my phone size. And I'll refresh this. You can see the background image loaded. It's the 800 one and it's 213K. If we come over to something more like a laptop size, you can see a new background image and this one's uh, 425K. It's the uh, 1200 image. And then if I go to a large screen, then we can see the last background, the 3001 image, and it's 1.8 megabytes in size. So this will just make the, um, the picture resolution, it won't look grainy, and it also is optimized for a mobile device. Come back to our Pixel 2 and uh, 2XL, and we'll get this set up over here on the side. All right, let's come over to our TS file here, and let's do a um, let's do an app uh, description. And I'll and I'll call this uh, this is like our little tagline. That's going to be my atmospheric happenings. And let's come back to our, uh, we don't need to worry about the index anymore. Let's come back to our HTML file and I'm gonna put everything, let's go ahead and set this up. I wanna put this all within a container, an outer container. Uh, so, so let's set this up as a class container and then we'll, um, and then I also wanna do a uh, app uh, title class. Uh, now title class, we'll put this and I'll do a dash and we'll do this, oops, dash. And then we'll just do this. That I'll set up and then I'll save that. Um, let's just save everything. Okay, there's our title. Let's do our CSS here. Uh, not our main CSS, let's come to our component CSS, which is this home, home screen, the only screen that we have. Set this up. So the container uh, will be, you know, where everything, uh, it's gonna be kind of a fixed size as far as the width goes. So let's go ahead and set that up. And you'll see how this is gonna look as we work through this. So the container, I wanna set a max width of uh, 30M and a min width just something a little bit smaller, 20M. I want to set our margins up. Uh, let's set our margins up to uh, top, bottom, zero, and the left, right, I want to set to auto, which will take any additional space and it'll, it's going to center the whole, the, uh, the whole container within the center of the screen. Um, and then our padding, we'll go ahead and uh, let's set this to 0.6m. So let's try that. Okay, and um, see a little bit of padding. Don't really see a whole lot happening there, but let's uh, let's see what our our container actually looks like. I like to do this when I'm playing around with things. So I'll set a border one pixel solid red just to see how our container is uh, laid out. So we can see the containers there. It's going all the way across, but we're not centered yet. So let's go ahead and get that centered. And so the app uh, title. We'll just do a text align and we'll make that center. OK, 
Okay, perfect. Text align centered, everything looks good. Um, if we go to a larger screen here, let's go like to a laptop size. I'll reduce this to 50%. You can see how uh, everything's kind of centered in the middle here, right? Um, and that's what we want. That's that auto in the margin. And let's set this back up to 100%. Okay. Uh, the last thing I want to do is to set up a splash, a little splash screen here that when we do initial load, this is always going to be displayed at the top normally, but when we're loading, I want to just have something that, you know, that people look at. That's kind of a typical experience that people expect. So let's come to our TypeScript, our uh, component TypeScript class and set up the, um, set up the things we're going to need to get our splash screen working properly. So I want to have a variable called slash hold. And this is going to be a Boolean. We'll make it initially equal to true on load. Um, and then um, we're also going to have a loading variable. And this is also going to be a Boolean. And this will be true on load also because we haven't loaded any data. So we'll be in a loading mode. So we'll be in a splash hold in a loading mode when we first start out. OK. and then. Um, when we when we first start up, there's what is called a lifecycle hook uh, in Angular. It's called on init, and we want to use that. So um, I'm going to import that up here um, on init. We'll do an implement uh, implements here, and we'll implement on init, and then we'll create a uh, an on init uh, function here. And this is where, uh, like I said, this is the entry point. So everything kind of gets loaded up, every, all the variables get set, and then we're in the on init. And this is where we're going to do something. So I want to do a set timeout. Um, I want to do a set timeout. And we'll use a lambda expression here. And within this, this timeout will we'll less we'll make it last for two seconds. These are milliseconds. So within here, uh, I just want to say uh, after this timeout is over, we'll go ahead and set this uh, splash hold to false. Um, outside of the timeout um, call, we're going to uh, load our data. And so we're going to have an asynchronous call that's going to go out and get the data from the API. We're not going to put that in right now. That'll be the next part. But for now, we'll just say, um, we'll just make it instantaneously load, basically. And we'll set this to false. This will be. Um, eventually put inside of our uh, inside of the um, asynchronous call after the data comes back. All right, I like that. So let's come back here now and get our splash screen set up. Um, so we have our container. Um, let's come back here above this. And uh, let's set up a uh, splash div. We can do a um, div and we'll put in our uh, app title and we'll do the same thing with description and then finally uh, we'll do another div and this is going to be like loading the loading uh, uh, indicator and that's going to have like a smaller font size so I want to put this in its own class so we'll call this splash and I'll use a BIM uh, convention here with double underscore status and here we'll just say loading like that. Let's go ahead and save everything, see what this looks like. Okay, now we need to do some styling and then we need to also use an ngif to get these to display at the proper times. But let's come in and do our styling first. Uh, so let's set the, let's go ahead and just uh, get our splash going and set some stuff up. So. It's going to have to be lower. I want it one third down. So let's set up our margin top. And we'll set that up to uh, 30 uh, view height. And that'll uh, bring that down, which is good. And then uh, let's go ahead and set our font size to uh, 2.4M. And let's do a font weight of uh, 400. Uh, and then let's do our text align center. See how that looks. But I need to get that loading now. We need to deal with that loading. So the splash, this was double underscore uh, status. And that will just make our font size a little smaller. We'll um, drop it down to 
uh, by to uh, 0.8 m, and we'll do a font weight, uh, make it a little lighter. Should get the loading. Okay, good. I like that. Now, obviously, we're not going to display the caption, the heading, the header, and this uh, splash text at the same time. So let's go ahead and get that set up. I'm going to go ahead and do an ng if right here. And we just want to say, you know, display the scraps, the splash. <laughs> if uh, if uh, our splash hold is true or our loading is true. And down here, we want to do the similar thing here. We want to use kind of the reverse logic of this. So we say if it's not holding, uh, if it's not, if we're not in the splash holding and we're not in the loading, then uh, go ahead and load the um, app title. So let's go ahead and save that and see what it looks like. So there's a splash screen and then there's the, uh, the title. I'm going to put a space right here. Let's try that one more time. Loading. And then we do that. Okay. All right. So that's it for the base application. Pretty simple. Just uh, a lot of CSS styling and that kind of stuff. Not really anything too complex, but uh, we'll be getting into uh, laying out the rest of it, getting our data service and all that uh, stuff coming in on the next uh, few parts. There's going to be three more parts and then we'll be all, all finished. All right. So my name is Lonnie. Thanks for watching. And um, I hope that you're finding this valuable. I'm having a great time doing it and sharing the knowledge that I have about um, OCS and all these other things. So uh, stay tuned for the next part and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.